Heidi, ho there, my lovies, and welcome back to Crazy But Not Dangerous. I'm Shorty Vaughn, and I'm hungry. Let's make some dinner. Hey, hooray, skippy, skippy, super duper. What are we going to make? We're going to make meatloaf. We're going to make a low carb meatloaf. And I am, my back is out a little bit, so I'm actually going to be using my Roboku food processor to make short work of this and let's go ahead and get my oven preheated i'm gonna turn it up to 400 degrees because that is my favorite cooking temperature and yeah i just love it so the other day on sunday andrew i was sitting out back just enjoying a little bit of sunshine. And Andrew comes out there and says, do you know that I only have two fizzy waters? Yeah, he likes those LaCroix. I don't buy the name brand, I get the store brand because I'm cheap. And I only have two LaCroix. Are you sure? Because I could have sworn I just bought some. Anyhow, I went into the laundry room, that's where we have our beverage refrigerator. And sure enough, he only had two LaCroix. So danger, Will Robinson, danger. He was all in a dither because he only had two LaCroix. So I said, well, do you want to go to Albertsons? He said, no. And I said, well, it's almost, you know, by the time I get going on my scooter, it's going to be dark. I'm not riding in the dark, so we're going to get delivery. So I got onto the Albertsons app. I put his, you know fizzy waters into the cart and then I'm looking through the deals to make sure that I've got everything that I want because if I'm going to get delivery I'm going to get everything anyhow yeah this deal popped up for a dollar 99 per pound lean ground beef so this is an 85.15 which is one of my favorites just enough fat to make it tasty and cook really well, but lean enough that I don't feel guilty. $1.99 per pound. Yes, please, and thank you. Now, when I went through the app um, on Wednesday, I'm not sure how I missed this. So I don't know if it was just one of those things that popped up. So the original price on this, $15.80. My checkout price, just about $7.00 and 90 cents yay hooray this is four pounds so i am going to make a large meatloaf today i'm going to use two pounds today i'm going to put two pounds in the freezer for another day and yeah let's get down to some low carb meatloaf because i'm hungry so i've got my roboku this is like a restaurant quality food processor um, and I'm using the food processor today because my binder, instead of using bread or breadcrumbs or something like that, I'm going to be using some old fashioned oats. And um, I'm using the oats, but I'm going to go ahead and grind them into a powder format so that they um, are most like oat flour and they combine really well with the meat basically i just want them to kind of disappear a little bit so i've got my old-fashioned oats here and i've got a one-third measure because that's the one that fits in here the best i'm going to put three of these in that's going to be one cup and then i'm going to give them a bzz, 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 you know and kind of grind them in to an oat flour and that's going to work just fine with me because i did not want to go buy an oat flour i don't know i'm trying this recipe out i'll let you know how it is this is one of the few times i have not um you know pre-tested a recipe but it's it, it has all of the elements in it and i think it's going to work just fine so let's plug this baby in and get this on here. 
There we go. And I'm going to go ahead and give it a bzz, 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 and we'll have a nice powdery oat flour um, on the cheek because I got these oats over at the discount barn and it was like a three pound no name bag for a dollar ninety nine or something like that. It was unbelievably cheap and too good to pass up. Okay, well that's pretty powdery and I'd say that is pretty good. Yeah, I'd say that's pretty good for a meatloaf. Hot dog. Now this is going to be one cup of uncooked oats is going to be about 55 carbs. And that sounds like a lot until you realize that that is distributed with all the other things that make up a very large meatloaf because we're going to have it meatloaf sandwiches and stuff like that. Well, I'm going to have a meatloaf wrap, but uh, yeah, it, it, it over lots of slices. So actually it will be very few carbs and the oats do have plenty of protein and plenty of fiber. So I'm not worried about those 55 carbs. It's going to get well distributed and I'm doing everything in the food processor today. Like I said, because my back's out. So I'm cheating a little bit, but if you have, if you have a bad back, you, my sympathies are with you. That's for sure. So we've got our oats and I have one package of mushroom or pardon me. I have one package of onion soup mix. I got this over at the Dollar Tree and I think it's pretty good. And it's three packages in a little box for a dollar twenty-five and I think it's very good when I'm adding it to um, a soup, a stew, a meatloaf, that kind of thing. I have not tried it, you know, just with hot water and eating it. I don't know how that is, but that is going, I know it is plenty salty and I know it has plenty of onions. And so we're not even gonna have to chop an onion today. I can get behind that, yay, hooray. Let's go ahead and add half of my family pack of ground beef. I just, yeah, $1.99. That just made my heart sing. I'm telling you what. And let's go ahead and put this in here. Yee, hooray. Now, in the past, I have used breadcrumbs, um, salad croutons that I needed to move on along. I have used um, just bread, just pieces of bread, and just, you know, thrown them on in. That worked just fine. I also have some eggs. I've got two left. Andrew has been making himself... Um, pork shoulder and fried eggs for the last few days. And today I told him you can, yeah, you've got to save me two eggs for tonight's meatloaf, buddy. All right, okay, no problem. All right, I'm gonna put two eggs in there. And then I'm gonna go ahead and give this another bzz, 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 and get everything incorporated. Okay, all done. And now I have that mixture here in this bowl because the food processor was getting really full. And so we've got a couple more things that I wanna add. I'm gonna get it all stirred together. I have about eight ounces of mushrooms here and they're pretty dirty, yeah. They're, they're definitely going to need a good wipe off and I'm going to zip, zip, zip these right in the food processor um, to bulk this up a little bit in place of, you know, some of those breadcrumbs. So, plus this will give a great, you know, extra um, flavor to my meatloaf, a little bit of that umami 
and uh, that will replace some of the salt that we may be missing um, because typically with my meatloaf I usually add um, Worcestershire and uh, you know maybe a few other things and yeah this will just replace some of those higher salt elements that usually go into my meatloaf so that we're still eating something super tasty super delicious what have you done today anything fun or exciting let me know um i worked in the yard a little bit i did dishes laundry and trash it's trash day i've got to get my 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 uh, rolly carts my dumpsters whatever you want to call them out to the curb and uh, i'll tell you what though i am super grateful for city trash pickup so i grew up where we did not have city trash pickup um sometimes my dad burned our trash and um at the at our bus stop there was a big hole and that's where people in the neighborhood would burn their trash at our bus stop the boys like to play in there Sometimes he would burn our trash. Sometimes he would load up, um, you know, a trailer and take it to the dump. Um, especially like after a holiday, if there was just a lot of wrapping paper and, you know, boxes and this, that, and the other thing. Yeah, he would take that to the city dump and it was an ordeal. But we all liked to go. We all... We all wanted to ride to the dump with my dad. It was, you know, a thing. I don't know why. And, uh, yeah, so sometimes he would go to the dump. And and then as he was less and less well, um, we got a dumpster. Like the kind you would find behind a grocery store. There was one guy in town who had a garbage truck. And you could lease your dumpster from him. And he would come pick up once a week. One of my classmates was his son. And so on vacations and breaks and what have you, you would see him riding around in the in the garbage truck with his dad. And I'd wave and he'd wave. And that was kind of fun. But yeah, it's really convenient to just put your trash in there. Just roll it on out to the curb and the garbage man comes and gets it. So in City of Phoenix, we're having trouble with our... Um, garbage workers with our trash collectors you know I don't know exactly what their title is but whatever it is they deserve a lot of praise and thanks thanks for picking up my trash I really appreciate it because I don't really want to burn it doesn't smell good don't know what to do with the debris when should stuff I don't have a big hole to take it to anyhow um, so there are uh, I'm on a training route for new garbage men and uh, I brought the can in from the street last week. That's my oven preheated 400 degrees. Yay, great. Thank you. Anyhow, um, I brought my can in from the street and they had broken the hinges on my recycling bin and kind of mashed it. The week before that, the guy that was running the dump truck, um, it slipped and fell into the dump truck, into the garbage truck, and then he got out and climbed up the side and, you know, got inside, got my trash can and just kind of heaved it over um, and bang, boom, onto the street, which I'm sure did not do it any favors and most likely also contributed to the hinges being broken so i had to go on to the city website and order a new trash can to get delivered um and it required your city um pin number like a city pin number like i know what my user id and password is thank goodness because oh, don't we have a million of those but it required a city pin number like, I don't recall ever setting setting up a PIN number. So I tried a few things, you know, and nothing worked. So, yeah, it was a whole fiasco, and I ended up having to call the city office number, and apparently I never set up a PIN. So then I had to go to this automated 
thing where on your phone you set up a pin number for the city so they can verify it's you and I don't know if miscellaneous people are just trying to order trash cans and your name I don't know if that's a thing or not but anyhow it was a word an ordeal and I do have a pin number for the city now just one more thing to remember I can barely remember my way home most days I've also got this really good looking bell pepper. Yay, hooray. And I'm going to go ahead and throw that into. And I love bell pepper and they have been on sale lately. Um, Arizona provides a lot of the nation's fruits and veg over the winter. And so winter is like my prime time season for getting discounted fruits and veg and i'm not mad at that one bit these were on sale for 89 cents a pound which is about 20 cents less per pound than usual but i saw yellow bell pepper on sale for 79 cents a pound and i'm going to be getting some of those this week absolutely okay so i'm going to just give this a very good chippity chop. I don't care if it's kind of like mush because I want those flavors to all roll together in that meatloaf. And I, I'm, yeah, my back's done for. Alrighty, all done with that. I put some gloves on. I'm going to add about one half cup of reduced fat milk. Yeah. We're kind of getting used to it. I just don't really, you know, I just don't really care for it. But I do think that adding milk to your meatloaf makes it extra tender and delicious. And I think that's worth it, whether it's 2% or whole. You just got to do what you got to do. Now, I told you I was going to grind this up until it was basically mush. And it is. It looks unappealing, but it smells fantastic. Anyhow, that's all those mushrooms, eight ounces, and the bell pepper, and, you know, the little bits and stuff that were left over from making the oat uh, flour and the ground beef and all of that stuff combined. The fact that this is an unappealing color right now will make absolutely no difference in the appearance or the taste when it cooks. Yeah, that will all go in. Ooh, I made a mess. That will all go in together and just be delicious. And now I'm just going to use my hands and get down in there and just kind of squish it all together. I want little bits of mushroom and little bits of the uh, bell pepper, that onion soup mix all throughout. Yay, hooray, yippee, skippy, and super duper hot diggity. I love meatloaf. So for years and years, Andrew would not eat meatloaf. He hated it. I don't eat meatloaf. I don't eat meatloaf. I think Melissa's at the door. Be right back. Okay, well, that was Melissa taking off. She's going to go run some errands and do some things. Anyhow, just keep working on this. Gloves are really hard for me because um, you would think that I wear small, but I um, should wear a medium. Um, the medium is too big and the small is too small. That's why I hate gloves and none of them really fit well. And that's also why I hate pot holders. Most of the time you'll see me just use a couple of dish cloths or something like that to get things in and out of the oven because you know oven mitts don't really fit oven gloves not fantastic you know they just don't I'm four foot five I wear a size four shoe in little kits and I'm about the size of a short ten year old child so they don't really make things um, that adults would typically use in my size. It's very unfortunate. So 
So you just make do with what you have. And, you know, for the most part, I get by just fine. Every once in a while, I have to ask somebody tall to get something up off of a top shelf, but it is very rare. And if I ask you to get something off the top shelf for me, I can guarantee you that I have tried every which way but Sunday to get it myself before I ask you. People say, you know, like short people have Napoleon syndrome or whatever. And to some extent, yes, but also there is a certain attitude that when you are um, short of stature, when you're a little person, that you are always going to need help, that you can't do anything for yourself. And um, there's a feeling of being less than sometimes that I, I hardly ever feel that way because, you know, I don't suffer from poor self-esteem at all. Not even a little bit. Okay, I think this is well incorporated, well mixed up. Every time I do a fold, I'm seeing a little bit of mushroom i'm seeing a little bit of the onion soup i'm seeing a little bit of the bell pepper and i can tell you it smells fantastic yay hooray okay so i have a regular baking dish a little casserole dish i don't um use a loaf pan i'm just going to shape it the best way that i can and you know what before i do let me make sure that my hands are perfectly clean it's not one of those things that i can really do with a spatula i'm not putting the gloves back on those are the pits and anyhow i'm just going to form it into a loaf shape the best that I can, which it came out of the bowl in a pretty good loaf shape, but I do want a little bit of a valley right in the middle there for my no sugar barbecue sauce because that's how I like it. Yeah, for years, Andrew would not eat meatloaf, and I would tell him, but I've seen you eat meatballs. I have seen you eat a hamburger. I have seen you eat all of these things but you won't eat a meatloaf no nope, i don't like it i don't want it i'm you know resisting eating a meatloaf at all costs and then 2020 happened and we were both furloughed and times were kind of tough yeah it was hard times and i have a little bit of meat and i have all of this bread because if you ever go to the food bank here in phoenix you get so much bread like you cannot even barely how are you going to eat all that just tons and tons but they'll give you one pound of ground beef well how do you make one pound of ground beef go somewhere you got to make a meatloaf anyhow he learned to love a meatloaf and now i told him this morning i'm making a meatloaf super duper hot diggity yay hooray so there we go, got it shaped into a nice meatloaf, straight down the center with a good valley. That's, that's what it looks like. Gave it a good valley, and I'm not going to put my barbecue sauce on yet, because I don't want my barbecue sauce to get too, too brown. You know what? I got beefy fingers. I'm going to wash them one more time, so I'm not cross-contaminating the whole kitchen. Safety first, be crazy, not dangerous. Okay, let's go ahead and get this baby in here. And I'm just gonna say that's gonna take 35 to 45 minutes. I'm gonna turn the timer on so that I don't forget. Sometimes I get sidetracked. I'll turn it on 35 minutes, there we go. And then I'll know. And yeah, I don't want to burn my meatloaf up. Because you know what? If we burn it, we're still going to eat it. Nobody likes that. Isn't that right, Andrew? That's right. That's right. Nobody likes burnt meatloaf. Well, I don't really mind it. I kind of like those crunchy little bits around the edges. Those are my favorites. 
Okay, I got my other two pounds in this bag and I just want to kind of flatten it out a little bit so it lays really nice and flat in my freezer. And then I can pile a bunch of other stuff on top of it. Okay, there we go. Get that all zipped up. And then I am going to write meatloaf on here because it's two pounds. Two pound meatloaf. Maybe it needs a little smiley face. I might need a little smiley face the day that I pull this out. All right, got that in there nice and flat. And that also not only will make it lay really nice in the freezer, but this will, making your um, ground beef flat, will make it thaw even faster. Yay, hooray. So if I'm in a rush, I need something in a New York minute, this is going to be good to go. Can't beat that with a stick. Okay, I'm gonna grab this meatloaf. Lord's mercy, it's hot. And it is just thickened all our way. Looks terrific. I've got my Sweet Baby Ray's no sugar added barbecue sauce. And I am gonna put plenty on there. Maybe that's about a fourth of a cup and then I'm just going to paint it on all over the place with this silicone brush and I love these silicone brushes because they wash up so nicely so clean and I don't have to worry about a bunch of bacteria in the bristles or soaking it in bleach or anything like that. Yeah, I think these are fantastic because I used to buy just a bunch of cheap, you know, paint brushes and then use them once, maybe twice, but, and then not feel good or safe about them and throw them away. But that one, I like the silicone. I think that's one of the very best inventions keeping us nice and safe. I think that that looks delicious. Yay, hooray, smells even better. It smells fantastic. Okay, let's go ahead and give that about 10 more minutes. That's just eyeballing it, you know, giving it the good old googly eyes there. I'm going to take its temperature, you know me, safety first. Get it to 165 degrees and that baby's good to go. To go with it tonight, we're going to have the leftover vegetables from the grill. So I've got some the leftover well, not that one, but I've got some leftover vegetables here. We've got mushrooms, tomatoes, zucchinis, onions, some Brussels sprouts, a couple of jalapenos. Yeah, I'm going to nuke those babies up. And then per the suggestion of one of my lovies, I'm going to go ahead and drizzle that with some light balsamic vinaigrette. That's going to be fantastic. And that's going to be our dinner tonight, the veg, the meatloaf. There's plenty to fill us up here, and uh, yay, hooray. My mother would make a meatloaf that would feed an army, and that woman was strong as an ox. How she got it in and out of the oven is beyond me. I made meatloaf for family dinner, and I thought it was going to break my back. Yeah, strong as an ox. Thinking about my mom a lot lately, and always at the holidays always and just just missing her all up you know it doesn't matter how old you get you still miss your mom and uh yeah yep it's a real thing and when something good happens the first thing that i think about is oh i want to tell her 
and then, well, I tell her anyhow, because, you know, I talk to, I talk to my mom all the time. She doesn't answer me back, but, you know, I know she's listening somewhere. So I wanted to show you this. Andrew has been on a mission from God to clean out his shop and just praise Jesus. That's all I can say, because it is, yeah, it's like an episode of Hoarders in there, and there's just this little path you can get through, and you can't really even work in there because it is just so jam-packed with, you know, junk, junk, terrible stuff. Anyhow, the man saves everything. But I wanted to show you our old phone. Yes, he saved it for decades now, and it had an answering machine. And, um... Anyhow, I am going to plug this in and see if it will charge because I'm wondering if a message from my mother uh, is still left in the answering machine. I don't, I'm not, yeah, I'm not counting on it. But my mother used to live, leave the most incredible messages on answering machines. Now, back then, you know, everyone was awkward. Nobody leaves a message on the answering machine now except for, you know, people that want your money. But my mother would call and she would leave a message. So my answer was she would message was, Hi, you've reached Tanya and Andrew. We can't come to the phone. Leave us a message. We'll call you back. Anyhow, and yeah, she knows she's calling me. And, you know, she's been my mother, you know, my whole life. So I recognize her voice. But she would leave this message. Hello, Tanya. This is your mother, Georgia Vaughn, calling and this is the reason why i'm calling blah 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 and it is 6 23 p.m i'm wondering why you're not home yet are you okay can you please call me back the minute you get in so i will stop worrying but yeah she always every time every single time she would leave a message this is georgia vaughn your mother calling yeah, it was hysterical. Like somehow I wouldn't recognize her voice or I would forget who my mother was. Anyhow, if there is one in there, I get this all charged up. I'm going to play it for you. Now this is going to Goodwill, but we are getting together a bunch of stuff to take over. The, not too far from here is a low income nursing home. It's a skilled nursing facility um, that and they cater to low income. So this is the people that don't have, you know, uh, long-term care insurance. They're getting, they're paying their way on Medicare and Social Security. And then the nursing home takes, you know, almost 100% of everything and they get a small monthly stipend. So we're getting together some puzzles that we've completed, some jigsaw puzzles. I always take over um, magazines and um, I'm gonna pick up some coloring books, you know, that kind of thing, some coloring crayons and markers and colored pencils and what have you. And we're gonna take all of that over there to donate to them because it's a long day and you need things to fill it up, you know, when you're not well and, you know, maybe you get very few visitors and what have you. So something to cheer them up a little bit. And Andrew, he's parting with some of his magazines and we've got, you know, things that will appeal even though they're a few months out of date. There's National Geographics and popular science, popular mechanics, that kind of thing. You know, even though they're a few months out of date, they will still appeal. And um, some gardening magazines and what have you. If nothing else, maybe they can clip them up to do some kind of collage or decoupage or something like that. I hope they have an arts director. Anyhow, getting some stuff together to take to Goodwill for donations and some stuff to take over to the nursing home and um yeah absolutely so that's what we're gonna do tomorrow yay hooray if there's a message on this answering machine from my mother if it still works if i can even get it to charge yeah i'll, I'll let you listen to it because they are hysterical 
Okay, this has come out of the oven and it is moist and juicy and delicious and a perfect 165 degrees. Yay, hooray. And I did see some of my vegetables with a little bit of the balsamic vinaigrette dressing and they smell fantastic and get plenty of veg on here. This is Andrew's plate. And there we go. All right, yay, hooray. I think that looks good enough to eat. And that's exactly what we're gonna do. Yay, hooray, it smells fantastic. All right, my lovies, be good, be careful. Look both ways. I'll see you next time. Thanks for watching Crazy But Not Dangerous.